Got us a brand spanking new 2024 in today with a whopping 8,700 miles on her. She's gonna get some preventative maintenance. He drove from a couple hours away to have us install this black market performance intake heater upgrade. This truck is a 2024, so it's the last year model for the one that has the grid heater bolt that falls down into the engine and takes out the whole engine. This is definitely very early on in the truck's life, but you know, why not? This is what the kit is comprised of. You have a billet block for the heater element to go into for the Allen bolts and then the two gaskets and a decal. This is a really budget friendly intake heater that does the same thing as the bank's intake horn assembly. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of on the bank's intake horn is that it ends up with a proprietary fuel line on the number one cylinder from the cylinder head to the fuel rail. If that ever were to fail, it is rare, but if it were to fail and you're on the road somewhere, you can't just go to a junkyard or the auto parts store and pick you up a new line. You have to call banks and hope that they have it in stock and can get it shipped to you somewhere. We use this blue plastic to prevent damage to the paint and the chrome scratches and stuff. It's a brand new truck. Even if you're just lightly leaning on something, you can scratch it. Made sure the body was nice and clean before we applied this so that there's no dirt trapped under here because if it's dirty and you put this on there and then you do this, well, it's going to scratch the paint anyhow. Now we got to tear this thing apart. Remember, cleanliness is key. Don't want any dirt getting in your fuel system. Here we're looking all the way in the back of the engine where that light is. And you can see that's our fuel pressure regulator on the rail. And we need to unplug that so we can get this rail out of here. It's kind of a chore. And while you have this thing apart, you're going to want to go ahead and re-torque your connector feed tubes because sometimes whenever you bust the lines loose, it'll rotate this nut. Then you end up with a high pressure fuel leak. So we have a 1516 socket all nice and cleaned out so we don't get any dirt inside of our connector feed tubes, which we already have capped off anyways. Now that the plenum's out of there, we're gonna have Michael get this thing cleaned up looking right. This is what the factory heater element looks like when it's lit up. Hold that, Michael. Now we're looking at the bottom side of the intake heater and this thing is held on with these tiny little metric bolts here and here and over time those nuts can come loose just a little bit and then it causes this stud to be like torched off and it'll, it'll melt this bracket, it'll melt the stud, the stud will fall down in the engine and catastrophic things happen. Here's an example of one that failed. It melted the bar off and melted the stud as well. Thankfully this one was caught early enough that it didn't destroy the engine because whenever this end melts off, it goes in the engine. This one here, it kind of gets stuck in the grid heater area. And so this truck was taken apart for preventative maintenance and they found this just chilling in there. Got really lucky on that. Now all we got to do to gut this thing is take a bunch of hardware out here and knock these plates out of here. And then we'll have to plug the hole where this goes through. This is the intake horn out of the truck and this is the throttle valve. We just unbolt this clean up the gasket surfaces and that billet block goes in between these two pieces. I want to know how many amps these 7.3 intake heaters draw on startup. You will see an uh, initial spike in amperage and then it'll kind of peter off because as this element heats up, the resistance increases, which decreases the amp draw according to Ohm's law. So we're going to go ahead and hit this thing. We're at 55 amps. You can see it kind of drop in now, slowly. So now for the one caveat to this system is grounding. So this intake heater grounds through this spacer. The problem here is that the spacer is separated by a gasket on this side and a gasket on this side, meaning that it's not touching anything metal with the exception of where these bolts go through this intake spacer, which is a very loose fit. I brought this up to Black Market Performance and they added probably because they don't want to redesign. You know, they probably got a thousand or more of these sitting on the shelf somewhere. So they came back and they added this little like M4 bolt. But if you recall, this thing draws 50 amps of current. 
well, what size wire do we need to carry 50 amps of current? Now, I'm not an electrical engineer here, but the bigger the wire, the more amps it'll carry. And for us to carry 55 amps, the internet says we need a six gauge wire. Here we have us a ring terminal for a six gauge wire. And this is our little tiny grounding eyelet. So that's not near sufficient for my comfort level. Now I will say I have bolted this together in the past without any external grounding and the heater worked. But that depends on how much tension you have with this bolt and this block here. It grounds no other way other than the fitment between this really loose bolt and the inside of that hole. So what you risk is diminishing the ability for this heater to function properly. So if you're not getting good grounding, this heater will not heat up red hot like it's supposed to. You could also have the potential for arcing, like having some hot spots. If you only have one bolt just barely contacting in one little patch, it could potentially like erode the aluminum. We got us some threads put in here for an M8 bolt. And we will just put some PTFE on this bolt for final assembly. And now we can run a ground strap from here with some six gauge wire to the intake horn here. Okay, so now we have our amp clamp. And if you remember, it drew what, like 50 amps before. Now, how many amps is that, Paul? Uh, zero. Zero amps, because we have no ground. We'll fix that right up though you can clearly see we had zero amps on this intake heater. It's not working at all. So if you put this in the truck, you're probably gonna get a code for the grid heater not functioning and this heater element will not light. Now, if you go ahead and do the next bonehead thing of using a wire suitable in size for this little like four millimeter Allen bolt that they provide, you will then have an external heating element from wherever you ground this wire to the block because you'll probably be using a 16 or 18 gauge wire which will be trying to carry 50 amps worth of current and that's going to light up long before this heater element does now we have a wire grounding this block to the intake horn here but if you remember this is a little tiny four millimeter allen so we have a 10 gauge wire on that terminal that is being extremely generous in my opinion for such a small fastener and we're going to see how many amps it draws um, see if it gets back up to our 50 amps. So go ahead and touch it for just a second, Michael. So, okay, we're good on our 50 amps. So now we're carrying current. You think, okay, well that's sufficient. Watch this. Go ahead and hit it, Michael. This intake heater can stay on for quite some time. Look at that wire starting to glow. We're already over 100 degrees. The t the, the the high temperature here is at 200 degrees. That wire is 215, 220 degrees, 230, 250 degrees. Okay, we're just gonna send it, go for it. See what our max temperature gets up to here. 250, 260, 280, keep holding it. Our intake heater is nice and hot, but so is our wire here. Getting up to 300, 320. Yeah, so that wire is smoking hot. So now, we're going to put a proper six gauge wire on this thing. It's already been crimped. We're going to solder it and heat shrink it and put that on there and see what she does. That's a proper ground, son. If you watch the center of the screen, which is on the wire, it's only 100 degrees. So go ahead and hit it, Michael. Remember, this wire is rated for the 50 amps, so we really shouldn't see any increase in heat here on this six gauge wire. We're still haven't even, haven't moved, still at 100 degrees on the center of that wire, and the heater element is red hot, so now we're good to go. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Hefty, hefty, hefty. We have one thing left to do before reassembling this truck. We're going to be using the factory intake plenum, and this is where the heater element used to go through. We'll drill this hole out for a quarter inch NPT plug and put that in there with some green retaining compound, and this thing be ready to go back in the truck. There are plenty of companies out there that offer aftermarket intake plenums, but there's no reason not to reuse your stock one. A, a quarter inch plug is a couple of cents versus this intake plenum that you cannot see when the truck is assembled is like a hundred bucks. So we're just gonna plug them. Got a pair of these done up for going back in the truck here. Now all we gotta do is put it back together. Michael got that sun gun looking nice. I don't care how clean you think you are, 
best to blow these out with some brake cleaning air before you reinstall your lines and your rail. Today, Michael's going to learn us something. What's that? What's that tell us, Michael? It goes on cylinder three. Yeah, I didn't even know that shit was labeled. And that one? Wait, what? Where you at? Cylinder, cylinder five. five. Pretty slick. I had no idea that they started labeling these. That's pretty cool. I do really miss the days of the five nines where you could pull the rail and the lines as one assembly. You'd never even know this didn't come factory. Can't even tell we've been in here. Sheesh. Y'all didn't really think I was gonna leave it like that, did you? You know me better than that. Like Christmas. We're gonna crank this thing. It's gonna crank a little while because the whole fuel system's dry. Clear prop. Don't she sound pretty? Did our job right. And look, no lights on the dash. Just got back from a five mile test drive to make sure we don't have any funny noises or boost leaks or anything like that. Everything sounds good and this thing's ready to go without having to worry about the intake heater failure.